Welcome back to another Turbo Territory video. On the first episode, we purchased this car, sight unseen on Marketplace, for only $5,500. The seller suggested that the car only needed two things. However, we have probably completed over 100 different things that this car was missing, including diff bushes, random nuts and bolts that were missing, steering wheel cover, door handle, blah, 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 blah. We then went and got our front diff bushes done at One Stop Bush Shop in Bayswater, Melbourne, Victoria. And then going on into the second video, gave the car a thorough wash after it had been sitting around for a few months collecting spider webs. And we started working on those ugly dents that the original Territory Turbo Bonnet had. Not only was the bonnet the wrong color, but it had been hit in multiple areas. And after looking on Facebook Marketplace and finding only three Turbo Territory bonnets for sale, two of them which needed major work for $400 and $600, there was one Territory Turbo bonnet missing the scoop section for $1,000. So I decided that I'm going to paint it and fix it myself. Spending about half a day in the shed, bogging, sanding, and painting this thing. Let's get into it. So I'm just trying to shape it to get that nice curve happening there. It's been two rounds of bog because I had some low spots and then I've got to sand back this side as well. I'm going to give the whole bonnet a sand with 800 grit sandpaper and put some color on this bad boy. Let's send it. We're going to get this painted today, 100%. So this side is done, pretty happy with it. There's a little bit of a high spot here. That's definitely gonna show up, but it doesn't really bother me. That's a bit, a bit of a lump there. These edges are pretty good. So if you didn't know when you're checking bog or something like this, it's always good to feel it because your eye can't really tell. You feel it, it's definitely a high spot there. And then that section there is high. So you'll probably see that as a little bit of a indent in the final, but it doesn't really phase me. I just don't want it to have like some nasty dent. Let's go on to the next side. Brand new paper on there. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. It's not 100%. This part here, this is a high spot and that's a little bit low in there. I think I'm just gonna leave it because I don't really care too much. I don't really think anyone else is gonna care. Let's get this whole banner sanded down. One thing about my setup at home is that I don't even have a garage. I'm working out of a carport, which I've covered with plastic sheets on the side. I'm someone who just tries to make things happen no matter the situation. I could just say, look, I don't have the space, I can't do it, but that's not my attitude. I wanna try and make things happen. Because for those of you who didn't know, my son and I work together and he wants to be a mechanic when he's older. So in any way that I can help in shape or form to build his skills until he enters the trade will help. And it also gives us great bonding time together. So the first thing we're going to need to paint this up is obviously our paint. So we've got our Ford Ego Grey paint there that I bought from Paint Away. $220 a litre. It's got purple, gold, green, metallic and all these different pearls. I'll open it up and show you guys that now.
Okay, so I've done the first layer of clear and I'm pretty pissed off because my gun started spraying water and I have this ugly as imperfection right there. One thing I forgot to do was empty out the compressor and check the water trap. And there's a whole lot of shit. I don't even, I think it's just little sprays of water in the bonnet, which is so annoying. Look, I'll make it work and I'll, and I'll fix it, but that's what it's looking like after the first coat. I think I'm just gonna let it tack right off and then I'm gonna try and clean up some of the water. Like, look at that. It's fuck. I've seen guys use masking tape and like, to, to grab at it, I might try that. This could be a complete disaster, but I'm gonna give it another coat. So probably can't be much worse than what it is now. And this is why you don't paint stuff at home and you go get it professionally done in a booth. The chances are, if you do try something yourself, unless you're an absolute OCD and you get everything per, like fully correct, you ain't gonna f it up. This f sticky tape's cooked. All right, we've got a little piece coming out now. That's our piece. I wonder if this is gonna work. So I've seen guys just like, I just saw it on a video and I don't know if even this is for this, for doing this, but where the, where the f up is, you just kinda, oh no, that was a fail. Okay, I kinda took it off. Oh yeah, it's like peeling it off. Let's just do that over the whole bonnet. Legit, it's like full taking it off. And then when I go over it again, I will show you what the final result looks like. Same cars, working on cars, how good is your problem solving skill and how quickly do you give up? And the metallic looks beautiful, but there's so many little water spots, like how are you supposed to fix them all? I honestly reckon this is gonna, dude, this is good. Here we are on the next day. I've let this thing dry for 24 hours. So I'm gonna go along now, give this thing a sand with 2000 grit sandpaper and give it a buff. news our genuine wastegate solenoid has rocked up for those of you who don't know what a wastegate solenoid is it is a part of the turbocharger system that helps the computer speak with the turbocharger to open and close the wastegate on the turbo so when the turbo reaches the desired amount of boost that the computer is commanding a door will open and release any excess boost above that out of a exhaust port. Some cars are internally wastegated and some are externally wastegated. My car, in this case, the factory style is internally wastegated. So these plumb back into the factory exhaust. And without this wastegate installed, the computer cannot talk to the turbo, which means that it may lean out the engine, which means that there will not be enough fuel in the engine at certain points of the rev range when you are accelerating and could possibly melt the pistons because not only does the petrol provide the engine with the explosive power to move the piston up and down, it also cools the engine as explosions are happening. And if there's not enough fuel in there, the engine can overheat and melt the pistons, leading to engine failure and then needing to rebuild the engine, which is quite expensive, as you may have seen in my FG video, where I had to fully rebuild my FG XR50 turbo engine from ground up. So we tap one line into the side, one line into here, and then our plug goes onto there, and we should be commanding proper boost. Oh, there's Thomas. So Thomas is gonna put this on, here you go. Let's go. So here's our car with no bonnet. I'm hoping that the color match is good. I'm gonna let this thing down. So Thomas has located the lines. Show us what's happening in the line there. So the old line had that inside it, which is probably part of the old wastegate solenoid. Oh, someone's blocked it off. It's pretty hard to see, but that's that's the plug there that we need to tap into. We don't have to tap into it, we plug that in. And then there's two vacuum lines down there somewhere that we have to fix. We need to clean up and paint this battery tray too. It's looking a little bit. See, one of the lines is bigger, so I'm guessing that is here. Get some um, hose clamps, some like small hose clamps. We need to cut this hose flat too. About 55 bucks from Jefferson Ford. 
So we're not sure where this uh, wastegate solenoid mounts, so we're gonna check where it's mounted on my FG. Behind the fuse box, or in the fuse box there somewhere. So we found this online. A little bit confused about what it means, but yeah. Probably doesn't matter exactly where it's mounted, just as long as it's mounted good. Oh, it's getting dark, so we set up some lighting, which is gonna help heaps. Just got this portable photography light, and uh, yeah, let's keep sending it. All right, so I'm just gonna cut this line straight here with the blade, because we want it to have a nice snug fit once we get it on. As you can see, I'm highly professional, and I've done this millions of times. So she's in and all mounted. Thomas has done an amazing job there. We've just zip tied it to the strut tower, so it's nice and out of the way from the heat. So we should have um, proper boost commanding now. Great work, son. Only 14 years old. I wish I was that good at 14 years old. All right, so we're gonna get this bonnet on now because Thomas will be at school tomorrow and it's like my only chance to get it on. So let's send it. The bonnet will sit on these. Hopefully the color match is, is good. Oh no, like a ratchet. Yeah, just put them, put them next to the thing and then we'll grab the bonnet together. I think the bonnet, like that thing has to go down. Does it? Because it goes underneath. Yeah. Bonnet looks terrible at the moment because it's not fully buffed. How's the color match? Dude, completely different, but it might look different once it buffs up. All right, so the way I took it off, so just like lift it up. We're just going to try not to scratch it on the car. Lift it up. You can let it rest on it. I'd probably try and put it behind that hinge thing. Yep, there we go. Um, and then just, we just have to line it up. Do a bit carefully, because the gap might not be. Because the gap might not be 100%. So there's the bonnet on the car, and you can see that metallic popping through there. And the color match is looking, looking not too bad. So here's what the bonnet looks like on the car. I'm quite happy with the color match. The driver's side of the car is a little bit sun damaged and does need to be cut and buffed. And I think the color match will be much better. I did not take the car to the paint shop when they mixed the paint. So this paint hasn't been color matched. I just simply gave them the color code and they mixed the paint for me. As you can see, the car is missing the grill. So our original grill was broken and cracked and I just threw it out. And I found out it's actually quite hard to find a turbo territory grill. I currently have a lead on one, but the guy has had COVID for a week and I'm able to pick it up. So if any of you have a turbo territory grill out there in Melbourne, Victoria, and you want to sell it to me, please let me know in the comments below. And we're going to do something different with the front bar scratches. So I'm thinking about trying to repair them without having to paint the whole thing, just to show you guys my method of how I'll repair a front bumper bar. I hope you liked this video guys. Consider subscribing if you wanna see more car content and follow along with this journey. And we'll catch you in the next video.